Hey everyone, sorry for not uploading lately, but I'll have you know that I take my April Fool's jokes very seriously. In reality, my poor car has been having a bit of a stroke of bad luck lately. And that isn't even the worst of what's happened. So today we're going to take a bit easier on my car and let the FSD beta take a leisurely drive through. No, just kidding. We're going to be stress testing in an area that the other so-called self-driving cars wouldn't dare attempt, the hills of Oakland, California. Similar to my previous videos in Berkeley, these narrow streets were designed at a time where there just weren't many people living in the area. But now that the population has exploded, there are parked cars littering the roads, making these small streets even smaller, which can make for some pretty tough right-of-way interactions and situations where speed control and logic will absolutely be needed to get through safely. These roads can be challenging even for humans, and there's often no choice but to go into oncoming lanes around blind corners, which can make things interesting because you never know what may be right around the corner. We'll get straight into the full drive right after I tell you about this video's delicious sponsor. Factor is a carbon neutral meal delivery service made by a team of gourmet chefs and registered dietitians that work hand in hand to provide pre-prepared, ready to eat meals that are not only delicious, but nutritious as well. And before we get any further, I gotta tell you that I'm not gonna push anything on you guys that I don't really believe in, which is why I ordered a giant box of these meals to see what's what before I agreed to this sponsorship. And after eating a variety of them and sharing them with my wife and family, we are all in universal agreement that they are excellent. Like seriously, none of us has had a meal we weren't super impressed with. They're never frozen and use fresh ingredients, which is a difference you can really taste and you simply can't beat the convenience. They're ready to go with just a couple of minutes in the microwave or oven and my favorite part, no prep and no cleanup afterwards. Our sink has never looked so clean. They have more than 27 meal options that are updated every week, including options for keto, calorie smart, vegan, and vegetarian lifestyles. So no matter who you are, there's definitely going to be something you'll like in there. Using my special link in the description gets you 50% off your first box, which is a fantastic deal, and you definitely do owe it to yourself to try them. It keeps me out of the drive through and I think that my body and overall health appreciate that. You are what you eat, after all. A big thank you to Factor for sponsoring this video. All right, let's get this drive started. You can see a person with their car door open ahead, which is visualized on the autopilot display. Very nice. And we are approaching our first unprotected left-hand turn with fairly low visibility. You can see the steering wheel make a sudden movement to the right, and not sure really what that was about since it clearly shows a left on the path planner. Continues creeping out, trying to get visibility beyond these trees to our right, and it takes so long doing this that it almost has to deal with the car that pulled out from the left, but ended up being fine. Also does use the suicide lane, which wasn't really necessary because there was no cars approaching from our right, but I guess that's okay. Next intersection is a little bit of an odd one. You can see all these roads just kind of meet and there's no real traffic controls for anybody. Um, so it uses the turn signal and kind of briefly goes over the double yellow line, which I think was fine. It's probably the exact same path I would have taken. And you can also see it using some amount of caution as it gets into these more narrow streets. Um, older versions of the beta used to always try to get to the set speed no matter what, but you can see this one, like as we approach these blind corners, it really starts slowing down, which is way better and more comfortable, uh, com especially compared to previous versions. And if you're using headphones, please let me know if you can notice any differences with the audio. This isn't necessarily a super narrow road, but you can see it again slowing down a bit when oncoming traffic approaches. And it does so pretty naturally. It's not slamming on the brakes like it used to. I'm gonna go ahead and pause for a moment to point out that even though this stop sign's clearly visible, it actually isn't rendering it on the visualization and ignores it completely, which is the correct thing to do here because it doesn't apply to us. But I think it's interesting that it knows to ignore it even though it's directly facing us. I'm not sure if they're using map data to figure that out or what, but just kind of thought it was interesting. Obviously full and complete stops at stop signs now since version 11. No more California rolls, which is good for obeying the law, but bad for the flow of traffic. But I'll leave that discussion for another time. A little bit of a pinch point situation here. We have pedestrians on both sides and that oncoming car, and the beta handles that one extra cautiously, going very, very slow, which I appreciate. 
And here's another example of that speed control that seems to be drastically improved in these latest versions. Uh, flick of the turn signal there for no reason, which still upsets me. But you can see the, the speed that it's going when it can't see around the corners ahead is very appropriate for the conditions. Instead of just slowing down when it sees danger like before, it seems to be slowing preemptively until it can get a clear shot of the road ahead like right now and then it'll speed up again. Things like good speed control make for a much more comfortable experience in the car and make me more confident in its abilities. One thing that makes the beta still feel pretty unconfident though is some of its path planning decisions. We have a right turn in the nav route, but you can see the path planner switching back and forth from going left and right, which makes the steering wheel go a bit wild, even though the roads were clear in the visualization. Things like this feel pretty robotic, and they've been a problem since the beta released. Really hoping to see this smoothed out in the future. We reached the end of our navigation route, so just going ahead and setting another random one in, and you can see at some point it lowered the set speed to 15 miles an hour, even though I didn't see any speed limit signs that did that, so maybe it's going off GPS or something, I'm not sure. Here's another pretty odd intersection where we have all four of these roads coming together in a pretty odd way, and you can see some not very confident steering wheel maneuvers here, and the car going very slow uh, trying to figure this all out. The weird part about the inconsistent path planning and the more harsh steering inputs is that in all the cases so far, the visualization's actually doing a good job displaying the road and drivable space correctly, but it's still having issues. In older versions, it used to be that the road lines would jump around a bit when the scene was moving from camera to camera, and I thought that that must be the reason the path planner was so hesitant in its decisions and flickering back and forth, but that might not be the case, because the actual visualizations seem to have been pretty ironed out now, and we have a really nice steady view of the roads, and yet the planner still doesn't seem to have quite caught up yet. You can also see it visualizing a double yellow line in the middle of the road that actually doesn't exist in the real world, uh, kind of keeping it over to the right hand side of the road. I find it really interesting how it kind of dreams up lane lines that don't exist. It's a little glimpse inside the mind of autopilot. And although there has been a little bit of awkwardness here and there, so far this has been a completely intervention and disengagement free drive, which is uh, pretty crazy when you put it into perspective. And unfortunately, we're going to see a little bit more awkwardness here as after we make this right hand turn at the stop sign, these two next roads come together with no traffic controls, just like the other one. And the beta doesn't quite understand it. You can see it's stopping a bit early here, kind of like it's trying to be overly cautious. But again, everything's visualized perfectly. So I have a feeling that it's still a lot of the legacy networks that are still doing the path planning and actually driving the car. So hopefully we see an update in the future that makes it behave a little bit more human-like in scenarios like that. Credit for where it's due though, there's one area that the path planner seems to have gotten dramatically better, and that is over blind crests. So you see, as we go over this hill, we can't really see the road ahead, but the car is still pretty confident and it's not slowing down to a stop like it used to. It kind of just slows down until it can see the road ahead, which is exactly how humans drive. Maintaining a comfortable speed uh, when going over a blind hill is actually kind of a tough problem. You have to make a lot of assumptions about the road ahead, and it's nice to see the beta handling this one better. It used to have a lot of trouble in areas like that, especially in places like San Francisco. We have a left turn to make at this pretty odd intersection. You can see there's maybe five or six roads that all come together here, and uh, it's not the first left we have to go, it's the second one. And you can see the beta trying to figure out this maze of crosswalks going on here. But after creeping to get a better view of the road layout, it does proceed nicely. There's another thing that happens pretty frequently on roads like this, which is sudden stops for seemingly no reason. So you see we have a pretty tight right hand turn here, and the beta decides to come to a full and complete stop. Not really sure what causes this, and I really don't like it if I'm honest with you. I think slowing down is usually always acceptable to try to figure something out, um, but coming to a full and complete stop just upsets traffic around. Luckily, there was nobody following closely behind us, but that would be one of those scenarios where an accelerator pedal override would definitely be needed to not upset the person behind me. Something a little strange happens with the path planner after we make this left. Um, you can see as it kind of creeps forward into the next intersection up here, it swerves to the right hand side of the road for seemingly no reason. Very sudden and definitely not comfortable feeling inside the car. I did submit a snapshot of that one so that Tesla can take a closer look at that one if they wanted to. 
Then also not ideal behavior at the next intersection. You can see we have a roundabout here and the beta comes to a full and complete stop before proceeding, which of course defeats the entire purpose of a roundabout. Let's be real. Could be a side effect of it being trained in California where the vast majority of roundabouts have stop signs attached to them. Let's not talk about it. And here we see a motorcyclist kind of hog his lane and squeeze us over into the right-hand side of the road. Uh, he had a lot of room over to his right-hand side. I'm not sure if he didn't see us or what, but Beta did a really nice job reacting early and slowing down on that one. And this is that same corner that the Beta made a full stop at last time we were through here, and this time it just proceeds right on through with no problem at all. There seems to be quite a bit of inconsistent behavior regarding the path planning. Seems to approach very similar scenarios in kind of different ways. Bit of a sketchy maneuver up here that I'm not sure was quite allowed. The navigation route has us taking immediate left, which the beta follows, but uh, this kind of doesn't feel like it should be allowed. It was a valid navigation path in the GPS, so maybe it was, who knows. The intersections around here can be a bit wonky. And as we reach the end of this navigation route and set in a new one, we actually do end up going back through that same intersection, except in the opposite direction. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and slow down the video up here so you can take a better look at this intersection from a different view and kind of see what you think. So you'll see ahead where all of these roads meet. The one to the right is where we turned from and it kind of looks like they connect. I really don't know. If you're a local Oakland resident, please let me know if uh, the beta did good or bad there. And I know I've been pointing out a lot of trouble areas with the path planer on this drive, but sometimes it truly does amaze me. Like here where it's making this long sweeping corner and takes pretty much the exact path I would have, only slowing down a little bit and doing so very smoothly, then confidently proceeding up the hill even though it can't see over it and again slowing down nice and smooth until it has visibility. I really wouldn't mind the slowdowns if they were all like this. The slowdown does continue when it sees a couple of pedestrians ahead. You can see it going a lot slower than it normally does, which is a pretty good call because they end up just uh, crossing the street without even looking. And again, although there are probably some pretty good examples of path planning in these more narrow areas, I'm just going to be fast forwarding through it and getting to the juicy stuff. I was really hoping to have a bit more oncoming vehicle interactions in this drive, but luckily there ended up being a few more here towards the end. You can see after we proceed from this stop sign, the car to our left also follows us down the same road and the beta spots some traffic in front of it and just slams on the brakes. I don't think that car behind us was expecting that. He didn't get too close, um, but he ended up slamming on the brakes as well. I feel like a lot of the time, it's not that the beta is making the wrong decisions, it just kind of does them too abruptly. Another thing the driver behind us didn't expect was for us to come to a full and complete stop at this stop sign before the roundabout. You can see they got pretty close to us there. Uh, the beta then proceeds pretty slow and cautiously, I would say. Still does feel a little bit awkward through these roundabouts, but got us through just fine. As we fast forward to the next point of interest, just want to say that I appreciate you being here. The people that are still watching are the people that have made this channel what it is today, and I truly do appreciate you. I'm hoping to expand this channel into a few more subjects other than just full self-driving in the future, so as those videos slowly come out, please let me know how I'm doing, because your feedback has been crucial to the success so far. This next intersection is another really odd one. You can see that stop sign, but we're not supposed to stop at this sign like we are right now. We're actually supposed to continue all the way forward to where it says stop in the road. For a second, I thought the beta was just gonna blow this one, but it actually does make a secondary stop in the road. That one was a bit confusing, but it is kind of nice to know that the beta is obviously paying attention to the stop written in the road and the line, uh, even though it doesn't visualize it all the time and not just the actual stop sign itself. And giving this oncoming car just a little bit more room by slowing down and moving over to the right hand side of the road. It then seems to get a little bit confused about where these traffic cones are ahead. You can see one up here in front of us in the visualization that we actually run over. Not in real life, but in the visualization. That may be where that sudden break came from, but uh, yeah, it's having some difficulty. You can see it up here too. Having some difficulty figuring out exactly where these cones are. And it wasn't just getting the location and 3D space of the cones wrong. I think the more interesting thing is that on the visualizations, it didn't update even when it got a better view of them and it knew they weren't there. I find that pretty odd because I don't think it used to be like that. 
Occasionally I'd see an object in the wrong spot on the visualizations, but usually after moving a little and getting a better view, it would update and correct itself, but doesn't seem to be doing that with some particular objects for some reason. You see a person grabbing some stuff from inside of their car here, and the beta goes pretty slow around them. I probably would have given them the right away, but this was fine. And you can see a Model Y further up the hill that we have to do some negotiating with. They pull over pretty dang early. I think we could have uh, handled this further down in the street. Um, and they also don't give us a ton of room. You can see them moving further over, but still, uh, the Model S is a pretty wide car, and we're going to have some trouble fitting through here. Then you can see the beta actually folds the mirrors automatically uh, to get through this really tight gap. Always uh, gives me a little scare when it does these types of things, but did a great job. Then coming up to the stop sign, it stays stopped for a while, and at first I didn't realize what was happening, but it was because my view was blocked by the A-pillar. There was actually um, a mother pushing a stroller down the street, and it was yielding to them, thinking it was going to cross, um, but then they end up going a different route, so the beta knows it's safe to proceed. This was uh, another one of those scenarios where Autopilot saw them before I did. Uh, it doesn't have the same blind spots as we do with the uh, giant A-pillars that we have in our cars and stuff now, so these are the types of moves that make me think that we're going to be replaced pretty quick. <laughs> no idea why there's a double stop sign on the visualization right now, and you can see some demons in the planner where it just shifts to the left uh, ever so slightly. The demons in the path planner where it's just shifting going from one direction to another and making the steering wheel feel very unconfident is probably near the top of the list of things that I think need to be improved uh, before we get to the next level of FSD performance. The other big area, of course, is the turn signal situation where it's just signaling all the time for no reason, which it's been doing a lot of in this video does a really nice job staying nice and smooth as this car rounds the corner. You can see it started to stop for a moment and then decided that continuing forward would be the better option. And it did that super, super fast, which was pretty uh, impressive to see. Then, believe it or not, the van stuck in the driveway ahead of us killed this drive. This was the end. And my camera dies. Despite all the challenges the beta had to overcome on this completely intervention and disengagement free drive, this is what stops it in its tracks. Pretty unbelievable. I actually did sit here for a while to see if it would try to go around, but it never did. Thank you so much for watching. Despite the end, I think Autopilot nailed this drive. Definitely still some areas to improve, but it's getting to the point where it's kind of getting boring and we're getting more and more drives where I'm doing nothing but supervising. So progress is definitely being made. Thanks again for watching and until next time, everyone. Bye. <laughs>